Hi, my name is Greg Kaffenberger, and today we're going to talk about vSAN in the cloud. We're going to start with a basic architecture for cloud service providers. We're going to talk about how the virtual machines interact with vSAN. And throughout the video, we're going to keep track of some recommendations. Recommendations. Okay, so first, in any architecture, you got to start with a couple of switches. So we're going to say switch one and switch two, right? And these can be leaf switches off the spine, they can be top of rack, they can be customer access switches. vSAN is fine with, with, with most switch configurations, right? So, so then we're going to start with four hosts. So hosts one, two, three, and four. And now I can already tell in the comments, you're probably thinking, but Greg, vSAN only requires three hosts, or maybe two if it's a robo, and you would be correct. But since we're going to do architecture for a cloud service provider, we're going to start with four. And as we go through the video, you'll learn why four is kind of the magic number to start with. All right, so now we have our hosts, we have our switches. What next? Well, our configuration is going to be an all-flash configuration. So in vSAN, it's important that you use 10 gig and it can be dedicated or shared. In this configuration, we're gonna choose shared. And we're also gonna choose two 10 gig ports. So we're just gonna draw them here. And then we'll just go ahead and connect up to our switches. All right, so one port to each switch. I know that's amazing artwork. And we're gonna keep track of some recommendations here. So first recommendation, four host minimum. And when you learn why, you'll say, oh, of course, that makes total sense. Then we're gonna say, for all flash, min 10 gig. Okay, so now that we've chosen this all flash a 10 gig network, we got to set up a couple things. And one of the things we want to set up is NIC teaming. So we're going to draw a little NIC teaming down here. NIC teaming. All right, we have a couple of options for NIC teaming. We have active passive, which you're probably all familiar with. We have IP hash, which I'm sure most of you are. We have load based, which is fairly new. And we have LACP. If your switches support it, meaning they're connected or the switch software supports LACP between LEAF switches, if your switches support it, I absolutely recommend LACP. For various reasons in the future, you know, if you're going to run NVMe drives down the road, whatever the case might be, LACP will set you up for the best uh, long-term return. So LACP. Now, if you remember, I said we were gonna have a shared network infrastructure, right? These are shared. So you don't see different NICs for, for vCenter or for NSX or any of that stuff, right? So this is a sh since this is a shared infrastructure, we're gonna create a VMK per, per host for vSAN, right? And you'll have other VMKs, so you'll have You'll have a VMK for, like I said, for NSX, you'll have a VMK for vMotion, for management. But since we have that and they all share this infrastructure, you're gonna to need to turn on network IO control. And there's lots of papers out there to tell you what shares to set up for vSAN and things like that. You can easily find that online. Just turning it on, network IO control, makes a huge difference as far as ensuring that vSAN has the available bandwidth that it needs. Now. Okay, we have our network, we have our hosts, we have everything happy. Now we need disks. So we're gonna start off with a very small configuration of vSAN, and this is key, right? So we're gonna say one cache, and we'll just start with just two capacity. Now, why did I start so low? Well, for you, if you're a cloud service provider and you're thinking about adopting vSAN, you might have an older cloud pod that you want to migrate to the SDDC, or you might building a, be building a multi-tenant environment that you're migrating net new customers that you're going to get. 
the recommendation to start small is because you want to take advantage of vSAN's flexibility. You probably, if you're moving from one side to the other, you probably have an idea of your I.O. profile, you have an idea of how much capacity that you need. If this is for net new customers, you don't know, are they compute intensive? Do you need more hosts? Are they storage intensive? Do you need to fill up the bays with more storage and not have more hosts? Are they I.O. intensive? Do we need multiple disk groups per host for more cache? All of these things you don't know until you start getting customers. So you want to take advantage of the fact that vSAN is so flexible, the cost of cash or the cost of solid state is going down, right? So as you need it, you'll, you'll buy it as the price goes down and you'll continue acquiring it as you go for the lowest possible price, which makes vSAN very competitive for, for pricing to your customers, right? We all know your customers want to buy storage for the cheapest or least expensive possible way, right? They want to get the value for the least amount of dollars. And that's what vSAN allows you to do by being so flexible. Okay, so now we have our, our capacity, we have our cash. Now we have to talk about how the virtual machines here interact with this infrastructure. And if you're a customer out there and you're thinking about moving to the cloud, this is where you want to pay particular attention. Right? This is where vSAN really shines. So in vSAN, vSAN is a policy-based distributed storage. So let me give you an example. You have VM1. VM1, you don't need to read this, it's not important. And we're gonna create a policy. And you've told your cloud service provider, cloud service provider, I need this VM to be super fast. I need it to be highly available and super fast. So you, if you're using vCloud Director, can do this, or your service provider goes in and creates a RAID 1, fault tolerance 1, which, which then takes this policy, applies it to this virtual machine, which then puts, v vSAN then looks at this policy and says, okay, I understand what's going on here. I have some capacity. I have some, I have some cash. I see what's happening. I'm going to write, I'm going to put data, data witness. That way, this VM has the mirror of RAID 1 for super fast, and it has a witness to make sure I can lose a host without losing my data. So I can lose any of these hosts. I can lose one of them. That's what the fault tolerance means, fault FTT1. I can lose one of these hosts and still will not lose my data. Now you're wondering, why is this fourth host here? I promised I would tell you about that. So the fourth host is, your, since the cloud service provider will need to do maintenance on this cluster at some point, they want to be able to take a host and put it in maintenance mode, but still be able to guarantee your availability and performance for your workload. So let's say this, they take this host down, they put it on maintenance. I'm not going to scratch it out because I need it for later, but let's say they're taking host two down for maintenance. vSAN is smart enough to go, hey, host four has enough capacity. I'm going to move my data down to it so that the customer and the VM maintains its performance that you requested and paid for. All right, so let's keep digging here. You have a VM number two that you want to move. We're going to create another policy. We're going to attach to this VM. Now you've told the cloud service provider, I, this VM doesn't need to be quite as fast, but I don't want to buy twice the storage of a mirror here like you did with, with fault tolerance one with a mirror. I just want to use, I want to use the least amount of storage I possibly can. So you or the service provider create a RAID 5 FTT1. And vSAN absolutely supports erasure coding RAID 5. And what, what vSAN does then is it looks and says, okay, well, I have another virtual machine here. And I'm going to write, okay, data, 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 parity, just like RAID 5 that we all know. Parity, data, data, data. And it does that on all the writes through all the, all the disks. In the meantime, your service provider that you're using has been incredibly successful using vSAN with other customers and has added host after host after host. And what makes vSAN so perfect for cloud service providers is as they add hosts 
in disks right as they add hosts and disks you as the customer have more capabilities also there's more distribution here for performance right because remember vSAN is a distributed storage platform so let's say you come to your service provider and say I need a workload it's my it's my most critical application it's my time clocks it's my accounting it doesn't need to be super fast but it needs to always be available your service provider says no problem I have lots of hosts we can take care of this so we say we write a policy and we say raid 6 FTT2, which means that we can lose two hosts and still maintain your data performance. And because, again, vSAN's so smart, it says, hey, these hosts down here, they don't have any workloads, and I'm a distributed storage platform, so I'm going to start here and go data, 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 parity, parity. Parity, data, 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 parity, data, right? So it says, okay, so it maintains that. And now imagine it does that as your cloud service provider grows and main, it is able to maintain performance across the environment for each individual workload. So vSAN takes the, the pain away from having to figure out, is my storage subsystem getting, getting overloaded? Is the network need to be expanded? And by writing these policies, vSAN looks at the, at the environment and chooses workload placement to best support your policy. Now, vSAN supports a lot more policies and a lot more options. If you're interested in vSAN, you're a customer or you're a cloud service provider and you're trying to move into vSAN, reach out to your VMware account team and they'll be glad to help you. Thanks for watching.